Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Liana Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now is Hamish Brocklebank. He's the co-founder and co-CEO of Fluved. So hi, thanks for joining us today. Thank so, you. We're very welcome to be here. Tell us a little bit about Fluved and um, what kind of market it taps into. So in essence, Fluved um, is an online educational resource platform for undergraduate university students, specifically for maths, physics, chemistry, biology and computer science students. And what we do that's quite unique is we go directly to academics from all around the world. And when I mean all around the world, I'm talking you know, not just North America and Europe, but we're Iran, Israel, um, we've got a couple in South Korea, you know, China, Mongolia, and we ask them to create content, especially for us. So textbook-like material that we aggregate and then convert into HTML and make available on our website, on our platform, and allow students from all around the world to interact with each other on it. Oh well, so um, are all the papers and content on there peer reviewed? It's or not is formally peer reviewed, but um, if you sort of speak to most academics, you will find that they will not make content, especially as it's pedagogical content as opposed to research, they will not make it available unless they are absolutely sure it is correct. And we also do, before we allow any submissions to go live, we check them all. Um, and we have a team of PhD students who do that. And then, of course, it's subject to feedback and comments later on um, from the user community. Wow, okay. Um, well, I mean, one of the big things about it as well is that it's obviously free. So how has the academic world taken to this? Have they seen this as a great asset, or have they been worried in the sense that, it's, that it may replace the more um, traditional textbooks and, well, very expensive textbooks? Well, I, I would say in answer to that question, the academic world is very divided um, in worrying about whether traditional textbooks are going to be replaced um, or not. So we have found there, of course, have been some academics who write best-selling textbooks who really hate what we're doing. And frankly, it's fantastic that they hate us. Um, because there's also a huge group of academics who love what we're doing, support us wholeheartedly, and fundamentally believe that you know, the access to knowledge should be free. Um, or if not free, should cost a nominal amount. We're going with free because we think that's you know, the right thing to do. Um, for the future, and as it says on your site, it's always going to be free and that doesn't change. So how do, how do you make money? How does it keep afloat from you doing this? Well, we, we actually tried lots of different models um, to, to generate revenue, charging for premium features, charging for sort of premium content that we had got, say, from publishers. And we actually found it was very difficult, even though our user base is growing you know, pretty rapidly, we actually found that that wasn't um, a particularly long-term viable model. So it's quite strangely, really, about three or four months ago, I was having a conversation in, in a pub, drinking too much, like all well, good ideas start from, um, with a friend of mine, he's a banker. And he was saying, well, we've been looking at converting all these financial documents with big tables, et cetera, into HTML. And he said, well, I see you do it for sort of maths and physics, and they've got all these hardcore equations, and you convert them from any file type into HTML, and you get all the data and analytics, which is, which is what we want in the finance sector, and also in the investor relations sector for sort of all FTSE 100 companies, or FTSE 250 companies even. So we tried that out, worked pretty well, and then so very beginning of January, we created the sub-brand called Docs Perfect. And what sub Docs Perfect does is we take the technology out of flu, the document conversion technology, and we sell it on a SaaS basis to FTSE 100 companies, investment funds, um, for you know, a, a nice monthly subscription to make their documents such as end of year financial reports available automatically for them as the sort of interactive HTML documents which they can get all the data analytics so they can see who's reading them, how long people are reading them for, um, and who's sharing them, where they're being shared with. So all this data that these institutions who have to publish um, for compliance reasons, all these reports want, and also research reports. Uh, we've had a lot of interest from them for sort of research houses to publish uh, their documents through our platform, through our conversion tool, to get the same data, which currently doesn't exist in a sort of PDF format, which is the normal format. Um, and the uptake and the response has been absolutely fantastic. In two and a half months, we've signed up six clients, 
and wow. we've got another 50 or 60 in the pipeline, ranging from a couple of sort of FTSE top 10 companies all the way down to sort of maybe a couple of FTSE 300 companies. For the future then, are you thinking of maybe hiving off that uh, all the um, tech innovation that you've done to support Flu to maybe hive off into a different company for more corporate work? Or is the corporate work going to, I suppose, prop up and be kind of the cash cow for the free online platform? So it's you know, funny you should ask that because my, my co-founder and co-CEO, Nicholas Philippe, um, who we, we set up the business together, we've had recently a lot of discussions about this. And actually what we really like about what we're doing, you know, we've moved effectively from sort of ed tech to fintech in terms of our financial revenue stream. But what's great about Fluid is when we want to add new features and experiments, we have this huge pool of students we can use as guinea pigs. And because they're not paying for it, if there's an odd bug on Fluid here or there, they don't get too upset, especially when we just say, you know, it's gonna be fixed shortly. So we have this huge R&D pool, and then that's, that is effectively our R&D section. And then all of the good stuff that comes out of that, we plug into Docs Perfect, which will then go sell to financial institutions or, or sort of investor relations department. And also, what's nice is it's a good story for people, um, you know, buying the Docs Perfect product because not only are they getting great value um, for the product they're getting, but they're also supporting sort of open educational resources and open access in education. So it's a sort of a win-win. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for having me. And that's Hamish Brocklebank, he's the co-founder and co-CEO of Fluved.